Hello and welcome to another Revit tutorial. In this video we're going to be covering Enscape 101, how to get started and basic commands in Enscape, navigation, that sort of thing. So we'll start, you'll notice that I'm at Enscape3D.com. This is their website. On their homepage you can see some videos playing, you can see some descriptions of what you can do in Enscape. This is a really cool site to browse, it's got a really nice layout. It just goes over a lot of the features. Uh, it has some testimonials down here at the bottom. And it also has this section right at the top, try Enscape free for 14 days. So if you enter your first name, last name, email address, you can start the free trial. Alternatively, you can go to enscape3d.com forward slash downloads. And you can download Enscape for Revit right here. Just click download and it'll give you this .exe that you can run. You'll need to close Revit uh, before you install Enscape, so make sure that that's closed. I'm gonna leave mine up because I'm doing the demo, but go ahead and close Revit, install the .exe, and when you open Revit again, you'll notice that up at the top, you have a tab for Enscape. It's been installed. You'll have the free trial ready to go, ready to rock. So let's get started with the basics. First of all, how do I launch Enscape? Well, that's actually pretty easy. Find a location and plan that you want to explore in 3D. Go to View, 3D View, Camera, and place a camera. That's gonna create a new 3D view. On your project browser, you can rename it view one, we'll call this one. We're not actually gonna use this one, but I'm showing for reference. Go back to the Enscape tab and you'll notice that everything here is kind of grayed out. This is what happens when you create a perspective camera view. As soon as you go back to a plan view, everything is back to normal up here. To launch Enscape, you'll simply need to select the view that you want to start from on this drop down menu, I'll select view one, the one that I just created, and go ahead and click start. So now we have Enscape launched. I'm in full screen. I'll press H. H allows you to hide or show your tool tips. These are all of your shortcuts that you'll use for navigation and orientation in Enscape. At the bottom, you'll notice with your mouse controls, your left click, if you click and hold, you can drag left, you'll look left, up, and so on. Your right click button will change the time of day, so if I drag that to the left, you'll notice a little clock icon on the bottom right of your screen as you're dragging it. It'll show you the time of day, and the sunlight will activate. Um, it'll move through your space. If you let go of the click and give it a couple seconds, or less than a second, fraction of a second, it'll recalculate the sunlight and global illumination in that space. So to walk and look around, you'll notice the move commands down here, W-A-S-D. It's a pretty comfortable position to hold your fingers on the keyboard. Go ahead and, and click and hold to focus your view and press W on the keyboard to walk forward. Pretty simple walking. We'll go ahead and S will move you backwards. D will move you to the right, A will move you to the left. But you'll notice up here that we're in fly mode. Keep track of which mode you're in, because if we notice, when I walk forward and I look up, I'm actually going to start walking up. That's because by default I've started in fly mode. And this can be convenient if you're trying to move up and down levels in your project, but if you're not and you're just trying to do a simple walkthrough, you can press the space bar to toggle fly and walk mode. So I'll hit space bar. You'll notice my view drops to the floor. I'm in walkthrough mode again. What walkthrough mode does is it keeps you from walking through desks, walls, uh, other objects that are not annotated in Revit as doors. You can walk through doors in walk mode. You can also walk upstairs in walk mode, but you cannot walk through walls. So if you do get stuck on an object, simply press spacebar to switch back to fly mode, walk through it, and you can easily switch back to walk mode. Kind of be careful with walk mode because as soon as you press space, 
it's going to orient your feet position at the closest horizontal plane, which is why I stood on that desk. <laughs> so those are the basics for movement. Let's go ahead and do some more intermediate and advanced movement. You'll notice over here on the help toolbar, E and Q, which are right next to WASD on the keyboard, will move you up and down. You can only use those when you're in fly mode. So I'll hit spacebar to go back to fly mode. I'll hit E, that will elevate me up. Alternatively, I guess if you are in walk mode, you can switch to fly mode, look straight up and walk forward. E and Q will also do the same thing. Q will move you down, E will move you up. You can move over the area that you want to stand on. Hit the spacebar again to be in walk mode. And then lastly, on the far left, you'll see the icon for the shift key and control key. So let's go ahead back. I'll go back to fly mode and we'll do some sprints down the corridor. I'll show you what shift and control do. Walk mode. While you're moving, I'm holding down W. I'm holding down my left mouse to look around. If I hit shift with my pinky, it'll speed my camera up. I'm moving much quicker through the space. This is convenient if you have large distances to cover, like this massive atrium. And you'll also notice that control down here says faster. Let's see what faster does. Now I'm really sprinting. If you're feeling really brave, you can hold shift and control at the same time. And you can go light speed. I would not recommend that. But those are your basic commands for moving quickly through the project. Usually shift is just enough to get the speed that you need to go through your model. Now, if you want to do a really smooth walkthrough uh, with a client, you can use W and D or W and A to sort of strafe to the side while you're looking. This can be convenient. So I'll do W, A now, or even just multiple keys to kind of move my position as I'm looking through the space. So you can press multiple keys at the same time. Just practice walking through your model before you bring this to a client and give them a smooth Enscape experience. Now for the next part, I'll show you a couple tips and tricks for the basics of Enscape to get you started um, with your Enscape presentation and uh, good organizational tools to keep everything buttoned up in Revit. So if you find that Enscape is moving a little bit slower, here's a helpful tip for creating a good uh, model view for Enscape to manage that will allow you enough space to move around, show your clients what you need to see in the space, while also managing the amount of 3D points that Enscape has to calculate. I'll go ahead up to the top and click on this icon for default 3D view. And that'll give you a better sense of the scale of the building that I'm working with right here. So when we were exploring earlier, we were just in this atrium space right here, the circular space and down this corridor. But you'll notice that there is a lot of extra geometry. Even though this is a streamlined model, I've deleted a lot of superfluous walls and, and elements out of it. There's still a lot of data that Enscape has to crunch while you're running that plugin. So to narrow that down, or if you're doing a smaller Enscape um, view or presentation for your client. What I like to do is create that 3D view and I'll go over here to the left under your properties bar and click section box. And I'll just squeeze a tight section box around the area that I want to focus on for Enscape. All right, so I think that's good enough. You can see from this 3D view that there's a lot less 3D data showing up inside of this section box. That's gonna make Enscape perform a whole lot better. So let's go ahead and select that 3D view section box from the drop down menu under the Enscape tab here. And I'll go ahead and click Start. All right, so we're way out here in space. If you go back to Revit, you'll notice that this is exactly what we should expect because we created a section view, section box view outside of the building. So we want to retain this section box. We want to clip out all the unnecessary 3D data, but we also want to create a more convenient starting point for our walkthrough or our presentation. So I'll go ahead and show you how to set that up. We'll go back to Enscape. 
and we know our navigation tools, I'll go ahead and bring the tool menu up again. I'll hold control to speed up my movement. And I'll just land right back in that space. So let's say we want to start our view right at the entry doors here. Let's say that's that's pretty good right there. If we go back to Revit on the Enscape tab, you'll notice that there's a camera icon right here that says Create View. If you click that, you can rename that view Enscape Starting View. Click OK. And you'll notice that it gets added right here to the list. So I'll go ahead and close Enscape. And instead, let's go ahead and start Enscape from that starting view. I'll just fast forward a little bit right here. So there we go. It's starting us off right where we left off at that 3D view that we just created. And now you can go ahead and pick that when you're presenting to clients. It'll be less disorienting. You won't be out in space outside of your building. Um, and you just have to remember if you have your tooltips up, check walk mode, fly mode. Make sure you don't start off flying around. Hit the space bar. Start off in a walkthrough and you should be good to go. Um, Enscape's a really awesome tool. There are a lot more cool things that you can do with it. Check out uh, part two coming up soon for more intermediate Enscape tips and tricks. I hope you uh, learned a lot, enough to get you started, and I hope you enjoy using Enscape. Thanks for watching.